On entertainment, as the Yoruba language faces the threat of extinction in view of the low understanding and usage of it by today's generation with exposure to Western education, there is one man, pr uh, all proud of sons and daughters of Odudua, would have to thank. He is no other than ace photographer and cultural anthropologist Dayo Adedayo. Adedayo is an author. One of the books he authored is called Owe Yoruba, which translates to Yoruba Proverbs. It is a combination of pictures and an English translation of Yoruba Proverbs on each page. And joining us live this morning on The Breakfast is photographer and cultural anthropologist Dayo Adedayo. Thank you so much for being with us. Oh, thank you. Good morning. I've looked forward to this conversation for a really, really long time because I'm personally also very, very interested in um, art and tourism and photography. Oh, so fantastic. I hope it's going to be a good time that we'll have. Oh, that's in the yes. Okay. I, I want to start with talking about your journey. Um, um, this, putting this work of art together has taken you years and years and years. Tell us about that journey. Uh, it was a journey that started 32 years ago, you know, when I first ventured into professional photography. But having said that, uh, it started bef long before then, you know, when I was 18, you know. Uh, but to cut a long story short, I started documenting Nigeria as a lifetime project 17 years ago. You know, 17 years. Yeah, 17 years ago. And in between those 17 years, wherever I go on my personal project, I photograph anything and everything, no matter how irrelevant you think it is. And that came to being today, which led to the Away Yoruba uh, book, because trying to illustrate a proverb with a picture yeah. is not something that you can just wake up one day and say, well, I want to do this. You know, it doesn't work out that way because it's, it's going to be very difficult for you to find the right image for the right proverb. 17 years ago, was this um, out of passion for um, documenting our culture, or was there something else that drove you into the, you know, that journey? I studied photography, and uh, I don't belong to the school of thoughts that complains about Nigeria. Nigeria is evolving. We are, we are going to be 60 years in October. And for me, when I see challenges, I see opportunities. I haven't studied photography, and as of 17 years ago, if you go on the internet or you look for any decent pictures on Nigeria, you will never see one. Never, 17 years ago, quote me anywhere. And that was what prompted me. And as of 17 years ago, there is no book, a compilation of books to say, this is Nigeria, this is Lagos State, this is Ogun State, this is yeah. Borono State. None as of 17 years ago. And that was what prompted me. And I can gladly say, as of today, uh, I am a forerunner in that part of, uh, in, in that business, or let me say, in that general photography. Uh, I'm the John the Baptist. I'm 100% sure the younger ones are coming behind me yeah. who are planning, doing something much better and greater than what I've done. So it's just for me to change the narratives of my country. We can't all be complaining all the time. Yeah. If you're an engineer, fix what is not right. If you are a doctor, fix what is not right. If you are a teacher, fix what is not right. You know, until we start pulling ourselves together. You know, if you are a cleaner, do the best. A news broadcaster, do the best. You know, we can't all run away from our yeah. country. You know, I have no other country but Nigeria. That's, that's really interesting. I, I, I want to talk about the um, book on Yoruba proverbs. What do you hope that you know Nigerians would learn? You know, from reading reading through it. Uh, Yoruba Proverbs comes out of the desire for my children, actually. When I turned 56 years ago, yeah. you know, in Nigeria, when you are having any, any party or whatever, people go out of their way to buy presents, gifts, for those who attended their events. Yeah. For me, I tweak it a little bit and say, oh, let me showcase the people that made my life in the last 10 years, plus other abstract images. That was how the Yoruba Prova came in. Yeah. You know, and um, it's, it was quite amazing. That was what I give out as gifts to those that attended my 50th birthday. You know, and people would just say, oh, Dad, can we have more? Can we have more? Oh, I want to buy this. I want to buy that. And I just said, oh, why not push it a little bit further? Because it was the first time in the history of the Yoruba race. Yeah. There are Yoruba programs, there are several Yoruba programs in the market. What they've done so far are illustrations in some of the pages. 
not all the pages. I am the first person yeah. to come out with a book, a page with an image, with a proverb, translation, and usage, the contest. It's really interesting. Um, and um, I, mean, I wish that we had, you know, two hours to talk about these things. You know, I, I want to talk also about tourism. That's right. Um, um, you, of course, to do your work, I see that you also did something on Ogun State. That's um, right. You've done, you know, most, all over Nigeria. Um, what do you think we are lacking with regards to tourism and the need to encourage more people to travel across Nigeria? Uh, in terms of tourism, we need to have a vision. And the only person that I have known so far in, I mean, in my 56 years on this planet is, uh, I mean, in Nigeria, when I'm looking at the geographical space called Nigeria, yeah. is the former governor of Cross River State, Donald Duke. I've never met him before in my life, so it's not like I'm trying to sell someone. This is the only person as that today, you know, that people can talk about Cross River State, even though Cross River State is in the South South, the oil producing states of Nigeria, they do not have oil in their state. But what he did was just to tweak a little bit. They have the last of the rainforest. They have the highest numbers of butterflies in Cross River State. There are some gorillas that you can only find in Cross River State, no other place in the world. You are talking of Obudu, the same mountain that goes all the way to Taraba State. So having said that, what makes me to come up with the book Ogun State is, um, I've done Lagos State, I've done Nigeria, I'm going to do all the states. Ogun State, for example, people might not be aware, is the Mecca and Jerusalem of Nigeria combined. Why did I say so? Before March, the advent of coronavirus, yeah. Every month, over a million people goes into Ogun State on religious tourism. Every single month. That's number one. Number two, all the religious organizations in Nigeria, they have all their headquarters in Ogun State. Muslims, same. The Queen of Sheba that was mentioned in the Bible and the Quran was buried in Ogun State, Okiri, Nyai Jabubu. Number four, you have the founder and the largest church of Niger uh, the largest church in the world before his death, the Celestial Church of Christ, Pa SBJ or Shofa, is from Ogun State, buried in Ogun State. You know, so yeah. to me, there are several other things. I'm not talking about historical and monuments. Now that is just religious. Yeah. Do you want to talk of Oluwara? Ekiti State says. They can only find warm and cold spring in Ekiti State. No, there is warm and cold spring in Ogun State as well, in Itolu, Itolu village, near Ilaro. You know, all these things we need to bring out to the fore. Yeah. And when you talk of Adire, Adire is known to Ogun State. You know, you can't have Gari. To soak Gari, they will say, well, I want Ijebu Gari. You know, That's from State <laughs> it's from Ogun State. And the best Gari in Nigeria is from, actually from my own town, Ijebu Fair where you have the largest uh, cassava plantation in Nigeria. And they've been, they've been farming for Gary in my town since 1450 Very AD, if I'm right. So th there is a lot that we can do. And in terms of tourism, tourism is the largest employer of labor anywhere in the world. So I just could not imagine us tapping into tourism, the hotels, the food marketers, not, I'm not talking about the actual place now. I'm talking about the value chains yeah. across the line. You know, you have the taxi drivers, the bus drivers, the people that are working in the hotel. And the most spectacular thing you will find in Ogun State is the Olusha Gomba Central Presidential Library. It will take you two days to actually assimilate what is in the library. It's the first out of America and the 14th in the world. And to capital, Ogun State is not in the industrial hub of Nigeria. They have more industries in Ogun State than Lagos State at the moment. So Ogun State is ready and is the gateway to Nigeria. Fela Nicola Pokuti, Professor Walesho Inka, Oba Sonjo, the current vice president, the first woman to drive a car in Nigeria. All came from Ogun State. All came from Ogun State. You have so many people, FCMB owner, founder, chief, uh, Otumba, Shibomi, Balogun. You know, you have several people from Ogun State, and you have all the names of everybody. Not yeah. everybody, because this is the first edition. Yeah. Of course, some people will be... And because of information, there is no data anywhere in Nigeria 
to say, oh, I'm looking for this, I'm looking for that, just as the federal government hasn't got the data on me or anybody, you know, everything is just scattered all over the place. Hopefully in our, in our, in our next conversation, we'll be able to talk about um, data and, um, you know, what we're doing with documenting our stories as a country and as a continent um, um, in Africa. But once again, thank you so much, Daya Adedaya, for sharing this conversation with us. The book is called Ogun State, The Gateway State. Yes. Brilliant. And um, Owe Yoruba. Owe Yoruba. Owe Yoruba. Owe. Owe. Owe Yoruba. I know it's translated into English as well. And okay. the contest of how to use it. Thank you so much once again. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you.